Alright, so I want to take a look at the rotary setup and configuration for the Algo Laser Alpha Mark II. Um, going through the instruction manual, it, uh, it leaves out quite a few steps along the way that I feel need some clarification. <clears throat> so this is going to be a, just a quick tutorial walking through how to set up uh, the rotary with the Mark II and uh, some of the settings you need to change in light burn uh, and uh, and what you need to do to get this working. So first of all, you'll see on camera that the wire, you actually don't have a dedicated port to plug the rotary into. So what you have to do is you have to hijack the wire that goes to this Y stepper motor. So on the bottom, <clears throat> on the bottom, this plug plugs into the step promoter so you're going to unplug that and you're going to use the extension cable that is labeled for the Alpha Mark II that they provide with the rotary and let's make sure that it's the right direction and you're going to connect those two up together like that so that's the first thing that you do that's how you get connected up and there's not a switch anywhere on the machine to flip between y-axis and rotary um, so it's all done kind of uh, manually so all right so that's now that that's hooked up let me take this off of here because we're going to take a look at the machine itself um, so what I did is I took and put a little witness mark on the top of this roller just to validate myself and what we have just to make sure is that we've got 20 millimeter diameter so they're 20 millimeter diameter rollers. So that comes out 20.6. So yeah, close enough. So 20 millimeter diameter rollers, which is something that Lightburn's going to want to know, um, and then that'll help us determine the distance traveled for one full rotation. Because for a rotary, uh, a roller rotary like this, not a chuck style, but a roller, one full turn is the equivalent of one full turn of the roller not one full turn of your workpiece. So very important distinction when you're dealing with rotary. So we've got that little witness mark there and then let's go ahead and jump into light burn. Move that out of the way. Okay so in light burn there's going to be a couple settings we need to make change to. So first thing we need to do is change the uh, dollar sign 101, which is your y-axis uh, stepper value. Um, so if I look at dollar sign 101, right now you can see I've got it set to 80. By default, it's going to be 100. So when it's 100, that's the value for when it's using the onboard y-axis stepper and doing flat stock work. So when you've got your, your honeycomb bed in there and you're doing just regular flat stock material, that's going to be at 100. And your homing is going to be dollar sign 22 equals 1. So that enables the homing um, process that, it, that it basically tells your machine that it has home switches and to use them to set itself to zero zero and then obviously we're on absolute coordinates there so the other way you could find these values is you come up here to edit and go to machine settings and if we look in machine settings let me expand this out a little bit you'll find the same values available so you'll find dollar sign 22 that's your homing cycle and it's set to true. Uh, so that was what I changed when I changed that dollar sign 22. And then um, I don't see I don't see the 101 in here. Okay. There it is. Okay. So that's your X Y. So if I go to the Y settings you'll see that I'm dollar sign 101 is 100. Um, so the easiest way to change that is you come in here to your console and if you don't have console turned on in light burn you'll come up here you'll right click an open area here and you'll select 
uh, console window or console and you'll see like right now it's off if I turn that on I get a tab up here for console and to change the values you do dollar sign 101 equals and for the rotary we want it to be 80 and then you can just type dollar sign 101 hit enter and you can confirm here that the value is in fact 80 so that's the first change we need to make second change like I said is we're gonna do dollar sign 20 20 uh, 22 equals 0 and that's going to disable the homing cycle um, because your rotary doesn't have home switches or limit switches um, so it's irrelevant and then the last change here we're going to go to start from and we're going to change absolute coordinates to current position so what current position is going to do is it's going to allow me to move my laser head by hand so I can come in here and I can move this and position this by hand and put it exactly where I want it and then when I say start it will start from that location so that way I don't have to worry about um, you know it going off to a different area of the machine trying to engrave it'll start right from where I put it and if you'll see here I put little um, acrylic paint pen I put marks where the center spot there's one here and there's one over here uh, and that's the center of the laser nozzle because without having a removable shield it's impossible to determine where the laser um, nozzle is so these allow me to line up um, the, the, the full laser module with the center line of my material uh, without having to figure out what's you know where this actually is pointing at so all right, so those changes are done. So we changed dollar sign 101 to 80 and we changed dollar sign 22 to zero. Uh, next, we're gonna go into the rotary setup. So let me shrink this back down and we'll go into the rotary setup here. And we wanna make sure that this is set to a roller rotary, uh, not a chuck style, it's gonna be roller. And we're going to enable rotary and roller diameter here, the second value, that's where we're gonna put the 20 millimeters. So you know it's 20 millimeters in diameter for the roller and then this value millimeters per rotation since that's for the roller 20 millimeters times 3.14 which is pi gives us 62.83 so 62.83 is the total distance traveled with one full rotation of this so now to test this I'm actually going to, let's bring this up, and I'm going to click on test. So it moved the laser head slightly out of the way, and then it was a little hard to see in the video, but you could see my witness mark right here at the very top of the bottom roller, and just watch for that mark. I'll hit test again. That mark comes around, does one full rotation and then goes back. So that's what we want. So my rotary is now set up properly. Okay, so now this is where we come in and take our workpiece. And what I did is I've just got some blue tape on here and I'm gonna set that so that that line is at the crown. So that tells me that that's the high point of my laser or high point of my material. I'm going to make sure that I'm level which I am and then lastly I'm going to set the focus so let me find my focus adjuster here um, so I'm going to bring this over so that I'm just at the high spot of the material and the front of the laser module and I'm actually already in focus because that's where the last thing that I use this for so there you can see I'm actually about one millimeter, give or take, above focus. Um, I find that that gives me a little bit better job. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room there, but not much. Um, so that's in focus. And then the last thing I want to do is using those acrylic mark, uh, the, the, the witness marks that I took, is I'm going to line this up. So I want my um, X travel to start there and my Y, uh, oops or I'm sorry, my rotary. So that line is in line with the center of my cup. So now I'm right where I want to start. So this would start me right at the top of the cup. 
And then I'm going to set my job origin over here. Since I'm on current position, I'm going to set my job origin. Now this is oriented to the way the cup is. So I want, I'm on my center line. So I want to use the center of the three uh, rows here. And then I'm starting at the top of the cup, which is going to be represented by this. So if I came down here, it would be dead center on the design. If I came down here, it would start from the bottom, work its way up, um, or left and right, obviously. So really, it's easiest to start here because I know that I'm at the top and center of my workpiece, and that's where I want the design to start. So next up, just for sake of sanity, I'm going to draw myself a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter square. And it doesn't matter where I have this on the design, I'm just going to put it in roughly in the middle um, just for sanity. Um, but you can see the little green dot right here. This, this little green dot represents where I'm starting my job from, and that is my current position. So when I click uh, go or I click frame on this, it's going to frame, you know, uh, left and right of center and downwards from the top of the cup. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to draw that 20 by 20 box. I'm going to do this at 1800 millimeters a minute at 15% power, and that should be enough to mark the blue tape for reference. So here we go. Okay, so let's check it out and see what we've got. So this is the square that I just burned. And we've got uh, right around 20. It's going to be a little bit off because of the curvature of the cup. Um, and then right at 20. So there you go. So and you can see that it went left and right of the center line. I was a little bit off on my line alignment, um, but went left and right of the center line, and I started here and it went down. So that's exactly what I expected to do. That's exactly what I expected to do based on my user origin or my or my current position rather, uh, setting here and showing it at the top right here for job origin. So you also notice that, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, the air pump is still running. Um, there's a bug with this machine that it doesn't turn off the air pump all the time. Um, it's kind of sporadic when it decides to turn it off, so really the only way for me to turn it off is I'm going to shut down the machine. Well, even that didn't do it. So how do I shut off the air pump? <laughs> okay. Okay. I use the um, the controller directly on the pump to shut it off, but that uh, that controller is actually um, not working right for me. It lock the uh, the up button doesn't work. Um, so I, I anyway. Um, all right. So that showed you. Uh, how to set the rotary up, burn a little test square there to make sure that all your settings are correct, and ultimately from here you can carry on with, uh, with your jobs. Um, so when you're ready to return this back to flat stock, you're going to have to undo this. Now you can set up macros, these macro buttons, macro 1 and macro 2, um, would also shortcut some of this, but you know if I come in here, do one, dollar sign 101 equals 100, and do dollar sign 22 equals uh, one. So that sets my stepper back to um, 100. It sets my homing sequence to, or my homing cycle to uh, true, to enabled. And I'm going to turn off enable rotary here as the last step. And by doing all that, um, the only other thing I'd have to do is physically reconnect the cable, um, take it from the uh, from the rotary and reconnect it back to the Y motor, and either take off my risers or find some way to elevate my bed. 
Um, so that uh, pretty much takes care of it. Hopefully that answered some of your questions about setting up the RR2 rotary with the Alpha Mark II from Algolaser, um, but it's possible that this, uh, this setup information could be applied to other laser brands and other rotary brands as well. So use it at your own risk, but hopefully that kind of gets you pointed in the right direction. All right, guys, thank you, and until next time, uh, take care.